Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Today my program is titled The Anti-Social Media and my guest is Elijah Yip. Elijah is a Hawaii attorney and a partner at the law firm of Cade Shuddy. He regularly counsels his clients on internet and information technology law, a new area of law for us older lawyers. As we all know, sometimes the internet, however, is antisocial. It seems like internet trolling and cyberbullying are in the news daily, from the president to celebrities to ordinary citizens. Today, my discussion with Elijah will focus on internet trolls, cyberbullying, and what can be done to address these internet issues. Welcome, Elijah. It's good to have you here. Thanks, Thank Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for be, being with us. Okay, what, what is this new area of law, this internet technology, and what, what's all that about? Tell, tell us old lawyers what that's about. Sure. Well, the internet is, is not a recent invention, but in the last maybe 20, maybe 25 years, it has become uh, progressively part of everyday life. Um, and with that, it's really changed the way we live, the way right. we work, the way we play. Um, so the issues aren't really new, but the way it comes up, the way it manifests, and the issues peculiar to the internet, the technology of the internet, uh, the intersection of that and the law, that's where I deal with. That's what I deal with. Okay. And of course, yeah, you're right. I mean, we see everybody mm -hmm. walking along the streets, right. looking at their hands with whatever device they yeah. have there. Yeah, the smartphone's a, basically an appendage now. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so we know, we, we hear the term social media. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? What, how, how do you define social media? Sure. Well, we know what media is. I mean, we're very familiar. We, I, you know, we all pretty much own a TV and, or if not that, radio. So I think the, the concept of media is pretty self-explanatory. But what makes it social is that in this medium, in this form of broadcast or publication or expression, um, you're also connected to other people. You're connected to people uh, across the world, and the internet makes that possible. Mm. And that's what makes it social. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. You're cl connected with people, mm. not just in front of you, right? But all over the world. Right. Wow, that's very powerful. Right, and very you immediate put it like too. That. Yeah. Very immediate too. So, so it's not just like publishing a book and passively having someone read it. Um, someone could read something you publish on the internet today and then respond to you immediately wow. about it. Yeah, okay, that, that is a very interesting concept and way to, to think about it. Yeah. And I, I guess that is, that is what it is. Now, my, the reason I want to talk to you is because I'm not sure it is so social. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it seems like what's called trolling uh, and cyber bullying, I've heard those terms a lot. What, what are they? What, what do they mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and does it, is it still part of being social? Uh, it, it is, unfortunately, because, I mean, so, so, the idea of being social is we're talking about relationships, human interactions. And there are positive human interactions and, and negative ones. In, you don't need the internet. And that's all social. And that's all social. Okay, I mean, all right, it's, so it's, it's not it's, necessarily just friendly. No, not, <laughs> not just friendly. I mean, I wish to Facebook or Twitter were just friendly, then, but that's not the case. Okay. And so when you we talk about cyberbullying, again, we're familiar with the term of bullying. That happens, I mean, that's, that's centuries. I mean, it's since the beginning of mankind. There's bullying, I think. Then somebody... But, but now it's, it's cyber because it's being done in the context of the internet. Okay. It's done online. And what's, what's trolling? Oh, trolling, yeah. Trolling, trolling is a term for, um, it's basically a, a, a baiting. It's basically baiting. It comes from a phishing term, actually. 
Um, when you're trolling for fish, you okay. throw a bunch of you know lines on the back of the boat with with bait and see what you catch. Um, in, in the context of the internet, what happens is people throw up inflammatory comments and, and see who bites, see who reacts, to get a rise out of it. Trying people. to get a reaction exactly. from, from people. Exactly. I see. That's trolling. Okay. Yeah. And, and is it also an attempt to somehow hound people or, or, uh, or go after it, them? Or is, is that what trolling term is used it, for it also? It can be. It can, and it certainly can lead to that. I mean, they're, they're, I don't know that they're very technical, defined terms, really. But, but trolling can lead to cyber... Um, cyber stalking or harassment, and cyber stalking is just where you would use on the online technology uh, to repeatedly harass somebody. So it's a sort of like stalking, except you're doing it, again, through the internet. Okay, now, you've been advising clients in this area, sure. right? And how, how did you get involved, or how did you, yeah. what, what brought you into this area of law? Uh, that's a great question. Well, I, I, two things. Um, I'm, I consider myself a techie. Uh, I, you know, I had a computer at a young age, and I've just always enjoyed tech um, as a personal hobby. Um, but the other, the, the intersection with law is that I uh, have represented uh, media companies. Um, okay. Our firm is one of the, uh, the, you know, one of the people around town, one of the firms around town that do me media laws. We've represented papers and broadcasts, right. et cetera. Okay. Um, and after a while of doing that, what I realized is that a lot of those clients, those types of, um, you know, broadcasters, they were going digital. Right. So these issues. Times change. Times change, right? From and newspaper. Exactly. To, yeah, yeah okay. a lot of newspapers are dying out. They have to go uh, digital. Um, you know, they put up paywalls and, and whatever. There are other just unique issues that come with being not just a publisher, but an online publisher. So that's kind of what sparked my interest uh, in that area. And that's grown beyond just media law. I mean, it's all things internet at this point. So I deal with privacy issues as well and, you know, a whole bunch of other things. But um, that's how it started. Okay. All right, so that's your interest. Uh, that's how you got involved in it. Now, there were, I mean, we talked a little bit about trolling. What are some examples of trolling and cyberbullying? What are some basic examples of, yeah. of what, what, what those things are in reality nowadays? Yeah, yeah, you actually, you go to any, um, you go to any uh, popular newspaper site, uh, and you look at the comment section, okay, that, and you'll find a lot of trolling there, I think. Uh, a lot of good examples are there where people okay. would just make comments that are not really even germane to the to the article. Okay. They're just they're just inflammatory. You know, um, attacks against attacks other people. Attacks against other people, or you know, this article is about putting up a new affordable housing center, and then the next thing you know, there are a bunch of comments about rail, for example. <laughs> article has nothing to do with rail, right? but rail is a hot topic. You know, whether right. you're for it or against it, it's a hot topic. Yeah. So just by putting it out there, you're seeing who's going to bite, and then you start a conversation about that. Uh, and you go after a person, perhaps, based on their point of view, and, you know, the trolls get, or the people who are trolling, just get a rise out of that. Well, I mean, okay, I mean, why? Why would you do that? Uh, I mean, I, what, I, yeah. What, 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 you, you wouldn't know, but I mean, I mean <laughs> right? you, you can, you can, can only speculate. theorize. Yeah, yeah I, I think for some, some people just get a high, uh, uh, some kind of adrenaline rush, if you will, from seeing others getting agitated. They, they like that emotional response, I think. I think for some, it's attention. Um, they like to get attention. They, even if it's negative attention, it, the fact that they're, they're engaging with someone. Um, uh, you know, honestly, I think some, some are, it's a lot, because of the lack of attention, they're, they're lonely. You know, they, they want some kind of human interaction. Okay. You know, and uh, I, maybe I'm speculating too much. No, but, but, I, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, where this is going is you're saying, like, this is their social interaction. Yeah, that is right. That's right. That's right. And this, the social media gives them an outlet <laughs> for that. Okay. And how about the cyber bullies? Same type of Yeah, same analysis? thing. I mean, think back to the time when um, we were in school, you know, and, and we see bullying in school. Uh, before the cyber part got added yeah. on, that's that's always been the case. So why do bullies do what they do? Um, it's it's a power play, you know. It's it's a way to, to kind of raise themselves up and push somebody down. And the internet makes it easier to do that. And it seems like recently we've had a lot more of it out there. It seems like there's been more examples. You, you've had yeah. some. You you told me that you mm -hmm. get calls all the time. Right. What I mean. Without going into anything sure. that's confidential or anything like that, but what kind of calls do you get? I mean, yeah. what, 
What are, what are people calling you about? I, I, get, I get calls where people will say, you know, my, my privacy rights have been violated because this person put something up on the internet. Um, I get, a, actually, I get quite a few calls on negative reviews uh, with like Yelp or, oh, okay. you know, Amazon. Or, from, you know, reviews from a like, business. From a business, right. And they complain that this person or, or this customer made very uh, negative comments about their business online. Can I do anything about it? It's false and et cetera. And, and um, yeah, a, a lot of the calls kind of go that way. Yeah. Is, what can you do? Yeah. I mean, what, 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 if you're out there on the internet and you're putting yourself out there, I mean, do you have any right to object? It, 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 and I'll give you a lawyerly answer. It depends, of course. <laughs> but but the I think the reality is that a lot of the time, no. The answer is there's not much you can do, at, at least in terms of the law. The law can help only so much. There are probably other strategies besides the law to manage those types of situations. But the law only goes so far. And I'm, I'm, we'll probably get to this in a moment. But because of the limits on um, government regulation of free speech, uh, there, there's only a limit to what you can do or what you can get the courts to do in reaction to that kind of behavior. Um, more often, it's, it goes back to the social part of it, it's really more of a PR issue. It's really more of a management or customer relations issue rather than a legal issue. In other words, rather than going to court to get an injunction, the better uh, response might be to reach out to the customer and see why are they really so angry and mm. perhaps address it that way. Think of a different strategy. Yes, that's right. Uh, and that's kind of what you do. That would be your advice, depending on the circumstances. Right, right. And, uh, do you ever? I mean, what 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 are some of the options when you're yeah. when you're attacked? But, you know, there that that one I like uh -huh. is that's like a PR type of right. response. What other things can you do? Well, if it's extreme, I mean, if it's if it really rises to the level of say defamation, and meaning mm -hmm. that it's it's a false statement that damages your reputation, mm -hmm. and you can prove that it's false, yeah. and if it makes if it's worth it economically, because of course it's not cheap to take the legal route, right. but if it if it's high stakes enough, then yeah, you can go to the courts for relief and try to get them you know to, to get an injunction, for example, to stop. Uh, the person from making these comments or remove them, but it's um, the standard is pretty high. You've had some cases. Yes, I've had some cases. Give us some examples yeah, of the yeah. cases that you've had that are out there. Uh, sure. Um, one of the early cases, and and when I tell you what which uh, social network it is, you'll you'll get my drift. Uh, one of the early cases involved a client that uh, went to Vegas uh, to, to party and met a, met a couple of people. Went back to um, his place and. Um, after the, and he met a girl in, in, during that trip. Uh, when he got back, uh, he found someone posting on MySpace. Remember MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> that was the Facebook of about 10 years ago, right? Uh, but someone, uh, he didn't know this person, but they posted on Facebook, uh, uh, MySpace, alleging that he raped oh my one God. of the girls that he, he met in the bar. Wow. And he, he denied it. I didn't even have any sexual relations with that person. Um, and so they uh, just out of the blue, just out of the blue, yeah, just out of the blue. And he, not even he didn't know, know the person. Even, oh, wow. Didn't know the person was not even in Hawaii. Wow, was uh, I believe it was in Oregon. Um, so we he hired us, and we represented him. We went to federal court and got an injunction against the author of the of the, the MySpace account to stop. And we settled the case, and it was amicably settled. But. Uh, but yeah, it was really cut out of the blue. That's amazing. And um, have you, what other type of cases have you have you had so mm -hmm. that you can actually go and do something about? Right. Well, I've had a case, and, and this also settled. So I don't think it went to the point where okay. it, you know the court. Okay. But if it did, um, this was a pr invasion of privacy uh, case where someone was um, videotaped uh, intimately. With somebody else uh, without their knowledge, oh, I see. and and then that you know the the sex tapes, if you will, um, okay. and, and that that there was a threat that that might get released. Um, How do you deal with yeah. that? Uh, well, um, there are a couple things. Generally, not yeah, generally, not without yeah. that case, but yeah, just I mean, generally. Gener generally, what you one of the things you can do, of course, is to call law enforcement because in some cases that would be a violation of criminal law, so you can go that route. Uh, but you could also you know hire an attorney and and demand that they 
not release that, and that if they do, there will be certain consequences. They'd be liable for damages, et cetera. And uh, if they don't comply, then the next step would be to file a lawsuit. To file a lawsuit. And sometimes uh, those work and sometimes they don't. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay, we're going to take a short break right now. Okay. And then we're going to come back. And I want to talk to you about some re recent events, recent cases sure. that have been in the news and get your opinions on those, okay? Okay, great. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on ThinkTech's Likeable Science Show. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we delve in the magical, magical, fascinating world of science. How science applies to your life, why you should care about science, what impact science has on you and on those around you, why you need to know some science. It's a fun, interesting, painless way to learn some good science that you can use. See you there. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. with Elijah Yip and we are talking about the anti-social media. My name is Mark Shklov. My show is Law Across the Sea on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, we've been getting a, a real education on, uh, well, cyber bullies, trolls, different cases. And uh, I want to go into um, a little more recent events uh, and kind of work our way up to that. Uh, you know, when, when you go on the internet, um, it, are you just giving people a license to come after you? I mean, mm -hmm. can, can people just do anything they want? Is that, uh, or say anything right. they want? No, of course not. No, you don't give up, you know, your, your rights, your rights don't, uh, you don't leave your rights at the login page, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, no, they, of course they can't. Um, there are, of course, there's of course more exposure, I think, to bad behavior. Um, you know, it's, it's the kind of environment you go into, of course, you're going to be exposed to, but they're, they're, that doesn't mean that anybody can do anything they want to you. Well, I mean, we're in this new age, right? Mm -hmm. We're in this age that, that you talked about where we're all staring at our right. hands. It is social. Uh, what are your thoughts? Should, should we go on it? Yeah. Should we go on it, or should we just say, hey, uh, I'll just read a book instead? Or? Right, yeah, yeah, there's, there's certainly options, right? I mean, mm -hmm. one reaction would be to say, this is just scary stuff, and I'm gonna stay off of it. And some people do do that, and that, that's fine, that's their decision. I think where I come out on it is you have to think of social media as a tool. And a tool is not, it's not hmm. per se bad or good. It's a it's tool, how it's, used. it's how you use it. It's exactly, right. it's how you use Great. it. And also being, uh, and I think a lot of wisdom, using, applying a lot of wisdom to how you use it and the, the risks and benefits of using it. And one of the ways you get wisdom is knowledge, you know, to be, to keep up with it, to understand what it is that you're getting into, uh, and again, the, the risks and benefits. Okay, yeah. so I want some advice and knowledge. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I see people all the time using it and young people especially mm -hmm. and I, I've heard many times about them uh, having a negative experience what 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 somebody sends you a, an email or uh, goes on your Facebook page mm -hmm. and posts something nasty sure what do you do how right. do you address that what, what, what what's your advice I think my, the best response would be to ignore it and to not take the bait. Again, you know, a lot of times when people are doing that, they're trying to bait you into a response that gives them some kind of high, and I'm not gonna give them that, um, that pleasure. I'm not gonna respond. And, and I think a lot of times that they'll just fade away because uh, a lot of these trolls, they, they kind of do a shotgun. They, they, mm -hmm. they do a lot of these posts, see who reacts, and then they go after those who react. Uh, if it escalates, you know, then it gets a little concerning, and then I might need to take some more protective measures. But um, like, I, like, like what? Yeah, I mean, but like blocking a person's account from um, accessing my own. Um, I think privacy settings are, are really important as well. 
uh, understanding how to, to manage your privacy settings uh, online. Every account uh, has ways that you can manage who gets to see and who gets your posts, you know, your, what you share online, and, and also who gets to interact with you. So understanding those mechanisms and taking advantage of them, are, I think, are an important uh, step. Well, if, yeah. I, if I'm a parent sure. and my young child, oh, young, I mean 10, 12, 13, right. around, around that age where they're all on the internet, and they're all talking mm -hmm. with their friends, mm -hmm. gets something from some person yeah. that's, that's negative, do you just ignore it? Do you report it? I mean, yeah. what, what do you do? It depends I mean, on the content. I mean, if it's, if it's very, very disturbing and graphic, then I might want to take the step of right away of reporting it. If it's more in the flavor of bullying around the playground, except now it's online, um, I, you know, I might advise my kid, ignore this guy or, or ignore this, this girl and, and hopefully they go away. You know, um, that's, that's how I dealt with bullies when I was younger. Um, so it kind of depends you know, on, on what the form of bullying is and what the content of it is. Okay, so it's a case by case. Is, it, it is case is by case, but me. I think as parents, I think it's important to understand what your kids are getting into hmm. and to understand what they're using. I mean, even the particular channels, because you know, in whether yeah. it's Facebook or whatever, there are different ways you can use it, and uh, the kids are pretty sophisticated. They know the technology better than you, do. better than you do. <laughs> so I think it, it kind of it's our job as parents, if you're a parent, to all to. To learn. To be involved. To be involved. And not ignore it. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, that's that, that's your advice to parents. Absolutely. Is, is find out what's going on. Absolutely. I mean, it's just like TV. The, the advice before with TV is watch with your kids and then, you know, talk through what you've watched. And I don't think there's any exception for social media. Right. Okay. Recently in the news, mm -hmm. lots of cases oh, have yeah. come up. Yeah. I mean, President of the United States blocked certain people <laughs> yes. from trying to respond to his tweets because they were saying things he didn't like. Right. Okay. And apparently the court said you can't do that. Right. But uh, didn't force him not to do it. Right. But, That's right. But, so what, what was that case? Yeah. That okay. a, right. Yeah. And I, I just got to say that this um, this administration and I mean the times of the uh, the times we're in give us just fascinating legal <laughs> situations. <laughs> but what happened there um, was that the the court in that case said that the Twitter account, um, you know, we know that President loves Trump the Twitter. loves the tweet, uh, yeah. that 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 was actually a limited public forum. It was a public forum, and so in First Amendment law, there are certain places, certain spaces that are meant. Uh, as a place for everybody to comment, to express themselves, and the First Amendment protects that. Um, so by virtue of him being in the office of the president, the judge reasoned that that account was basically a, a public forum, sort of like a sidewalk. So by limiting people from responding to his tweets, you're closing, you're like closing off the sidewalk, and that is a no-no under the First Amendment. Against the Constitution. Against, against the Constitution. Okay, so another case right here in Hawaii. Yes. Uh, Representative uh, Andrea Tupolo was able to get a TRO, a temporary restraining order, right. against somebody. Correct. For kind of, it sounded to me like kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. What was that about? Right, right. Um, well, in, in that case, and to, to my understanding, of, and I've, you know, I, I know what I know based on the news reports, um, no personal knowledge, but uh, there were allegations that she was the target of a lot of online posts, advertisements, etc. Um, that, according to her petition, uh, wasn't just offensive, but got to the point of threatening, um, including, according to her petition, threats against her family, hmm. and, and also threatened of harm, of, of, of harm, of right, type of and, physical harm, right, and and also apparently, again, according to the petition that she received death threats, hmm. um, probably anonymous, but um, I'm not sure if they were or not, but probably anonymous. Uh, and I think that's what pushed the court over the threshold to say, you know, no, that's, that's not protected. We, we can stop that. So on the one hand, it, it was like a, a political speech for the yes. president, and he couldn't forbid those because they weren't threats on this other hand, and we have a law in Hawaii, right, mm -hmm. about, about that. We do. Uh, the court said, well, 
this goes too far. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But, but it's kind of a balancing act, oh, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and that's why the, the Topola case was another fascinating study in kind of the intersection of a, a number of streams of law, First Amendment law, political speech, but also true threats, the, the idea of true threats. And she's running for office. She's running for office, yeah. and and it's it's just a, you know, it's <laughs> it, it's a very, uh, it's a, I would say it's a mess necessarily, but it's it's not easy to parse out. It sounds like case by case is the it, way it really, we're, it really we're dealing is. with it right now. It really is. And, you know, honestly, even the, the United States Supreme Court has not come out with very clear rules on okay. how it applies. Let, let, let's talk about Roseanne. Okay. Okay. I mean, she put something on that was a, uh, held by her employer to be a racist comment. Right. It sounded to me like it was, too. And, but... Another case that I that I read about, where somebody put some very nasty stuff mm -hmm. uh, about his employer, yep. uh, didn't get fired. She right. got fired. What? Right. What? Right. How do you? Uh, again, okay. you know, case yeah, by case, yeah. I guess. So two two things I want to point out there. There's kind of, there's kind of a um, common misconception that the First Amendment protects all speech, and you can't because of the First Amendment, everybody has a right to say anything, and no one at all can limit that, and that's not true because the First Amendment prohibits the government from regulating speech, oh, okay. not private actors, right? not private okay. people. So when we're talking about the employment context, unless you're the government as the employer, uh, if you're a private employer, the First Amendment actually doesn't quite apply to you, doesn't really hmm. apply to you. Um, there, there can be some exceptions, but generally it doesn't. So in the employment context, you, get, you run into another set of rules, and it normally, it typically has to do with um, a law called, called the National Labor Relations Act. Uh, and you might think, oh, that has to do with unionized workforce, and that's actually not true. Mm -hmm. Most companies are subject to the, the NLRA, and uh, what the NLRA does, uh, one of the things it does is that it protects uh, workers' ability to engage in what they call concerted protected activity, which means um, they get together to talk about their work, the conditions of the work, their compensation, and such. And, and you can't, as an employer, uh, clamp down on that. So in the social media context, you've got a can of worms. Why? Because you've got a lot of your coworkers on social media. Yeah. They're connected. You say something about, I had a bad day at work because my boss mistreated me, blah, blah, blah. You're complaining about your work conditions. And so that's the that's protected the activity. Oh, it's concerted because it's... Social, right? right it's right. connected. Um, so yeah. So if you cross the line and, and crack down on that kind of activity, uh, that's a no-no. Can't do that. Um, but but if if that's not at issue, then you can discipline or terminate your employees. Okay. For so what they do. Roseanne was not protected by any law. She just said something that came yeah. off the top of her head, and it was bad and. Her employer said, we're done. Right. She wasn't complaining about her workplace or compensation or anything. She was just making a comment you know, of her own views. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, Elijah, I know that you were clerking for Judge Samuel King. Yes, okay? happily, yeah. And great guy, great judge, yes. great person. I, I knew him very well. What words of advice did Judge King give you that you, you could pass on? Well, I think the thing I learned the most from Judge King is um, to not take yourself too seriously. Uh, he was, a, I, you know Judge King, he's, he's a man of great wit and wisdom, just a very funny guy, yeah. in addition to being a great judge. And just in the two years um, of working under him, I, I learned to, to yeah, to, to, to always to look at things with, with you know, with levity. Um, I think that's important, uh, especially in the stressful jobs that we have as lawyers and in life in general, you know, to take everything with a grain of salt and to not take yourself too seriously. And, you know, that sounds like uh, good advice for the social media or, or the anti-social media, uh, whichever we're dealing with. I think if they took that advice, we'd have less trolls. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, Elijah, I want to thank you for being my guest today. Elijah Yip partner at Cade, Cade Shetty, you, you've enlightened us and told us a little bit about the media that we didn't know before, and I appreciate you being my guest today. Thank you. It's been a, a pleasure.